the White House touting employment news, promising signs of a continued strong economy. My administration is committed to giving every American the opportunity to find a great job and have a rewarding career. There's nothing like it. This is not the strongest gain we've seen. This is a big problem for American workers. The administration and the media each have vast platforms. Ours is much bigger, frankly. Missing Molly Tibbetts, few clues given publicly so far. I understand this is frustrating. This is necessary for our investigation. We're all in this together. We're all trying to bring Molly back. Demonstrators are trying to bring attention to deadly gun violence in the city of Chicago and calling for the resignation of Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Ron Emanuel, first of all, is a con man. No, he doesn't care about anybody. This country hasn't broken your heart then you don't love her enough. There's things that are savagely wrong in this country. I don't understand how they would not root for the success of us present over to Hawaii. Yeah, it you was know, a Receive week. the remains from North Korea, a historic moment. It what was a, a week, yeah, I'm still what a, a little jet lag. It was, it was an honor, truly. And uh, Air Force Two, very cool to, to get a chance to speak with the vice president, interview him there. But then to see the way in which uh, the respect given to yeah. these remains so oh, many yeah. years later, it was an amazing thing to be a part of. So I'm, better to I'm a little jet lag. You cut me some break. You did a great job, and I applaud you. And, you know, in the channel for carrying it, my father was a Marine in Korea. He, he survived. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, for that generation, it's so forgotten in the channel and your coverage. Uh, really stood out, and he did a great job. And we got a lot. There's a lot of other news out there, too. A lot of positive to news. A lot there's of things that, that people thing. are excited about. And if you watch the president... That economy and, thing. That economy thing. Economy, economy, economy. He was in Pennsylvania two nights ago and really rallying up the crowd, getting them excited. And they are excited because they feel like yeah. things are going well. Economic, economic numbers across the board. According to the latest jobs numbers last month, I mean, there's something to be pretty excited about. Absolutely. Maybe. He's going to be in Ohio tonight, which we'll cover here on the Fox News Channel. Uh, but and I'm, I'm guessing he'll be touting some of these numbers at a record high number of Americans employed in the month of July. Look at that number, 155. I mean, it's tough to even put that number in context. All you need to know is it's never been that big. We've never been winning this bigly. Uh, 155, <laughs> 965. I don't even, I can't even say the number. It's, uh, it's impressive. And you want to see this kind of recovery because it's good for people when they have those. And it's across the jobs. board. You look at Hispanic unemployment numbers, a record low at 4.5%. Uh, manufacturing jobs, I think we're up at 380,000 new manufacturing jobs. Those are good paying jobs. Mm -hmm. you got to be happy right now. I mean, I don't care if you voted for Trump, if you didn't vote for him. Yeah. For the most part, you got to feel like this is a place that you want to be in this country. Well, and the president, you know, uh, does a weekly address and he touted the economy. Let me play this for you. Take a listen. My administration is committed to giving every American the opportunity to find a great job and have a rewarding career. There's nothing like it. Last quarter, the United States economy grew by 4.1 percent. To continue this incredible momentum, we launched the Pledge to America's Workers. More than 100 companies, associations, and others have pledged to train or retrain over 4 million American students. We're encouraging companies across the country to join our historic initiative and pledge to invest in training Americans for the jobs of today and the careers of tomorrow. Now, on the train riding up from Washington to come uh, join you on the couch, I was sitting uh, an aisle across from Larry Kudlow, the top economic advisor mm -hmm. in the White House. And to put all this in perspective, and we'll talk more about this later in the trade deals, but essentially, Larry says, the scales have changed. America is in the driver's seat. China is on the defensive. All these other countries. You saw the EU deal come through when they said that wasn't going to happen. And it's because of this economy that the president's built. It's because of the manufacturing. It's because of the investment that we're doing in the shipping of goods that we're doing. And, uh, yep. and that is the message he's trying to send. But hey, not everybody agrees. So, Peter, I said people should be happy right now, regardless of who you voted for. But not everyone is happy. Well, not everyone was hoping that this would happen, right? Well, I mean, just a reminder, un unfortunately, not everyone is pulling for the home of, team because uh, there's so much hatred for this president. We're just going to play a, a flashback of uh, the way this is just this is Bill Maher speaking, I think, representative of too many people of what they want to happen. Listen to Bill Maher a couple of months ago.
I feel like the bottom has to fall out at some point. And by the way, I'm hoping for it because I think one way you get rid of Trump is a crashing economy. Yeah. So please bring on the recession. Yeah. Sorry if that hurts people, but it's either root for a recession or you lose your democracy. Okay, mm. that, no, that's that's his perspective. Yet. Yeah, because if there was a recession, he would still be living his life in Los Angeles. Drink, I said I said this a few weeks ago, drinking his green juice and having his, his <laughs> filet at whatever restaurant he eats at. You know, Avocado that, that wouldn't impact his life at all. But no. the millions of Americans in this country, that would impact them. Of A1 course. column from the New York Times this morning. Robust recovery lifting laborers hit the hardest. So the unemployment rate for those without a high school diploma fell to 5%. In July, meaning the forgotten men and women, the people that fell behind for so long, the 400,000 manufacturing jobs that have come back since President Trump was president. Remember, the left, the elites, your Bill Maher type said these jobs are never coming back ever. Mm -hmm. So forget about it. President Obama said that, too. And, right. and President Trump said, no, you need to make things. And I believe that those those workers are just as important mm -hmm. as whatever high skilled workers you think are more important. That has happened, and he's done it based on fundamentals, so economic what is, fundamentals. What is your economic message? You talked about liberals. You talked about Democrats. If you are thinking about running for president in 2020 and the economy is still looking good, what is your economic message? I think a lot of people are wondering what, what the, the left is, what, where their soul is. You know, what, mm -hmm. what, who, who are they speaking to in this country? You well, know, when it comes to the economy, and Cory Booker is one of those who has talked about running for president in 2020. And here's the direction that he took. I'm a big believer that if America, if this country hasn't broken your heart, then you don't love her enough. Because there's things that are savagely wrong in this country. There's a normalcy of injustice that we've accepted. So, you know, as you point out, the message is for the Democrats that... Uh, they want you to suffer economically. I mean, really, you know, if you look back to a popular song in the 90s called Eat the Rich by a heavy metal band, the Democrats kind of co-opted that and said, you know, we got to tax the rich. Now we've moved to rooting against the country because we've become a bad country. People don't feel good about that. You know, Cory Booker was a moderate, level-headed guy. I've interviewed him and at I least too. a dozen times in Washington, and this turn is to me, an observation indicative that really the Ocasio-Cortez, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and the Bernie Sanders uh, grasp on the Democratic Party has really almost fully co-opted it when he, Cory Booker's going down there. And by the way, he's not saying it at just any place. He's saying it at the Netroots Convention, which is certainly a driver of the political movement online. They've, yeah. they've gone and lost their minds because they hate <laughs> Trump so much. No, really. I mean, I think a lot of reasonable people have been dragged uh, so far left. And also, I don't know, I mean, I think there's a lot of wonderful people, a lot of wonderful things being done in Newark, but Newark isn't a paradise. And this is where he was the mayor, where he was going to go fix things. And, and, and their Democrats should be brought to task for what they've done to inner cities, where they've had one party power for decades and decades and decades. And they haven't brought and improved the lives of a lot of Americans. And that's their fault. Well, you know what? It's interesting because we played sound last weekend of Joe Biden, who was talking about the border. Um, and you've seen these people that are thinking about running for president, how extreme they have to go in order to appeal to yeah. whatever the, the Democratic Party is right now. And I think they're still trying to figure that out. But the message that I'm hearing with the economy is we want to take more of your hardworking money to pay for the economy. You know, mm -hmm. we'll see how that message resonates. You know, it's either that or what we're hearing from <laughs> Alexandria Cortez, which is socialism. So when the numbers are what they are and we're, we're touting, the president's touting those, I'm not sure where the American people right. are going to so be. So American workers are better off than they've ever been, but we want to reverse the policies that made that work by taking back the tax cuts and then redistrib redistributing yeah. that money based on central planning from Washington, D.C. Well, don't take it that from, really works great. Don't take it from you, Pete. Uh, Pam Bondi, Attorney General in Florida, yes. responded to what Cory Booker said and said, here's why you can't get on board with that sort of thinking. Take a listen. He doesn't have to like the president. He didn't have to vote for the president. But you, ha you should want to hope for the president's success. Minority unemployment has plummeted. Um, Hispanic unemployment which is so important in my state, is at a low of 4.5. Kids that it dropped out of high school, the record fell 5.1%. How great is that, unemployment? So I don't understand how they would not root for the success of America, because when you do, it's rooting for the success of all of us. Yeah, so Cory Booker says there's something savagely wrong with America. Email us at friends at foxnews.com. What's he talking about? What's he referring to? And may he just be 
have a little Trump derangement syndrome mm. at this point. And by the way, Trump will be in Ohio tonight for another wild rally, I am sure. That's right. He looks there he is, is a in hot campaign, race there. He's in campaign mode. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, he had two rallies this week, one uh, tonight, and uh, this is just the beginning. Yeah. All right. We've got a big four hour scope, but I do want to bring you some other headlines that we are following this morning, starting with this one. The man that was charged with killing President George H.W. Bush's former doctor shoots and kills himself as police close in investigators confronting Joseph James Papas in Houston after a massive manhunt. Police believe that he was shot and killed. Cardiologists mark a house connect last month. It might have been revenge after Papa's mother died on the doctor's operating table more than 20 years ago. And we now know the identity of the Army soldier who died in a training accident earlier this week. Army Private Jeremy Wells rushed to the hospital after an incident at a small arms range at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Still unclear exactly what happened. The 19-year-old from Georgia joined the military last year as an aircraft electrician. He's been posthumously awarded the Army uh, Commendation and Good Conduct Medals. That is just so sad. Also this breaking overnight, President Trump responding to a letter from Kim Jong-un, a U.S. ambassador hand delivering the message to North Korea's foreign minister. It's unclear what it says, but it comes just days after Kim sent a letter to the White House following up on commitments that were made at that Singapore summit. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo just wrapping up a security forum in Singapore where he warned that Russia and China uh, are violating North Korean sanctions. And for the first time in nearly a decade, American astronauts are preparing to blast off from U.S. soil. This is so cool. NASA announcing that the crews for a new taxi-like shuttle service to the International Space Station. The spaceships are developed by Boeing and SpaceX under a contract with NASA. Back in 2015, Pete met one of the astronauts involved in that project, Michael Hopkins. Test flights start next year. Pete, you look so young there. <laughs> So what you're implying is that I've aged rapidly ever since then, <laughs> which is actually true. It's, it's, we yeah, though, these guys with these astronauts yeah. is incredible. All right, next. An update on the search for missing Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. Molly's friends and family speaking out while authorities remain tight-lipped. We are live in Iowa. And a little girl gets an awesome visitor on her first day of third grade. Her mom home from Iraq. Hi, Our position has not changed on the release of case facts, results, and conclusions. I understand this is frustrating for many in the public and the media, but feel this is necessary for our investigation. Authorities remaining tight-lipped about the search for missing Iowa student Molly Tibbetts. Despite officials disclosing little about the ongoing investigation, Molly's family and friends are now speaking out to the press with what they know. Former homicide detective and Fox News contributor Ted Williams is out in Brooklyn, Iowa with the latest. Ted, good morning. Ted, uh, you know, we're looking for any information here. What, what new information can you share with us this morning? Well, you know, guys, this is like a needle in a haystack. We're here in God's country, mid-America, and what we have is a missing young 20-year-old. As you can see over my shoulder, there's this uh, poster that is out here. This community is really galvanized and trying to bring Molly home. Now, here's what we know. On July the 18th, uh, around 7.30, Molly went jogging. Or uh, from her boyfriend's home, uh, and Molly has not been seen since. And the authorities, as you've already said, it's very close-lipped. But uh, recently, they found a red shirt. They don't know at this stage as to whether there's a nexus between the red shirt and Molly. But we know that Molly did not show up for work the next day, and the place she worked at, she would have had to have worn a red shirt. They've had several or more persons of interest. One of they looked at specifically is a hog farmer. Uh, they bought him in from what we understand for questioning. They also asked him to take a polygraph. Yesterday, I went out to that farm, spoke with that person, that hog farmer, and asked him would he take the polygraph, and he emphatically said no. So that's where the investigation stands at this immediate time. Uh, you and I have covered these many times on uh, Greta's show in the past, and we go in, we look for the timeline, we look for the motive, we talk to the police. In this case, the police, very tight-lipped, but uh, 
what do the authorities, what do the investigators want from the public, and what does that tell you about what might be a possible uh, motive of what, why this happened? Well, Griff, you know, and I got to compliment you, you have been uh, spot on through these investigations through the years with you and I going out. I can tell you that investigators are holding a lot close to their chest and they know quite a bit more than they want to give to the public. Uh, they are trying to hold press conferences and keep uh, this story alive in the public. Uh, but, in, on, but as it pertains to the investigation itself, they have a great deal of information that they don't want to share with the public because they believe that the perpetrator is out there listening. If they're there is someone holding Molly. And as to that end, there is a over $200,000 reward for uh, Molly's return uh, safely. And uh, they've announced uh, that they would certainly be willing to give that reward to anybody who would let uh, Molly go if they have Molly. And Ted, as you know, the country is now watching this story so closely and hoping for the best. She's such a beautiful young woman. Can you give us a sense of the town? I know it's a small one and we've heard from family members saying we don't lock our doors at night. How unusual is this particular situation? Have they had missing people in recent years or is this something they really haven't seen before? Abby, I wish you were out here. You would find, again, these people are engaged. They're wonderful people. They're very relaxed people out here, and they believe that, and they have uh, unlocked their doors. They, they know their neighbors, but as a result of this, now there's a chill in the air. They are locking their doors. Uh, they are deeply concerned about where Molly is. Now, part of my investigation is try to determine, we've heard, that there are sex traffickers out in the Midwest in this area. Mm. And so quite naturally, that is a part of the actual investigation that's taken place. Wow. Uh, Ted, it's very interesting. Lots more on this, and we're going to cover it closely. We're going to bring you back later in the program as well. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for your great Thank report. You, and you see the sheriff's number there, 641-623-5679. You know, the, the community, even if you think it's not important, call the authorities and let them know because they're putting it together. And as Ted said, the authorities are, are holding a lot of information on this case, but that must be because they think they may have a lead and they don't want that Hopefully. public, lest they should yeah. tip those people Hopefully. off. Hopefully. All right. Well, still ahead, a firework hurt hurled into a bar patio. The terrifying moments caught as people duck for cover. Ooh. Plus, as calls mount to get Chicago Mayor Rahm Emanuel out of office, our next guest says that he just wants to help illegals. A retired Chicago police sergeant is live with us next. I was flying. Welcome back. A couple of quick headlines for you this morning. A teenager will spend life behind bars after plotting an ISIS-inspired inspired terror attack. The 18-year-old wanted to use guns and grenades at a museum in London after she was stopped from going to Syria where she wanted to marry an ISIS fighter. She is the youngest woman sentenced for terrorism in the UK. And in a related story, Osama bin Laden's mom is sticking up for her killer son. In an interview, bin Laden's mom tells The Guardian, quote, he was a very good child until he met some people who pretty much brainwashed him. You can call it a cult. Bin Laden's mother denies his role in the 9-11 attacks. Of course, you remember he was killed by U.S. Navy SEALs in 2011. Griff, over to you. Thanks, Pete. Chicago protesters taken to the streets Thursday, marching against the city's crime crisis and demanding Mayor Rahm Emanuel step down. Well, we put it, this march together because in Chicago there's too much bloodshed in the African-American community. Do you think Mayor Rahm Emanuel has failed Chicago? Well, Ron Emanuel, first of all, is a con man. No, he doesn't care about anybody but the people in his neighborhood and his family. The city's in financial calamity. Here to react, retired Chicago Police Sergeant Pete Kokonis. Sergeant, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Just why does Rahm Emanuel need to go? Why does he need to go? He closed 50 schools in the minority neighborhoods. He promised 1,000 policemen in seven years. He hasn't got them. Um, right now, I think we have 1,740 people shot, 333 people killed. Um, 
you know, I think he threw all his cards in the Hillary Clinton's uh, basket and he expected to go to the White House after uh, she won the election. Well, his p plans were uh, uh, obviously upset. So now he's fighting for his political life. And, you, you, you know, it's not a time to start pandering for the uh, minority vote in order to get elected with eight people running against them. Sergeant, you put your finger on it, and that is that crisis. We'll show our viewers there's 300 in four homicides this year alone. These are, you know, I was embedded in Iraq normal, uh, numerous times. These numbers are, are war zone numbers, and they're right here in one of America's biggest cities. How are the police... You're talking to the thin blue line out there. How are they handling this situation? What do they think about the mayor? Oh, the, the, you know, the mayor's, you know, buckling under the, the Department of Justice, ACLU, Black Lives Matter, everybody else to get a consent decree. And he's not letting the people that do the effective policing have a voice in what they need to improve the conditions. The, the, the marchers, they march on Wrigley Field. They march, you know, on the Dan Ryan. I mean, my God, in Ferguson, during the, the troubled times there, they never closed the highway. So if the mayor continues to go along this path, he's just going to alienate more people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you take 50 schools and close them in a minority neighborhood and then force these kids to walk through different gang territories and you say you're doing something for education, yeah. his chief uh, education officer got indicted and pled guilty to big rigging. Big, bid rigging for over two million dollars so, so so you know his leadership is horrible so sergeant we've reached out to mayor emmanuel multiple times for a statement we have not heard back mayor emmanuel you are welcome to come on this show we will give you an opportunity to explain yourself but quickly before we run out of time sergeant i want to ask you for solutions what could the mayor do now uh to make things better what, what could he do to make things better abdicate his throne is the first thing he should do walk away he's got no chance there's a young lady running against him former u.s attorney african-american woman named lori lightfoot whom i support but i don't agree with everything she says but you need somebody that's got a handle on what's going on you can't just all of a sudden ignore one one whole part of this city and then all of a sudden now try to do everything you can to get their votes well, Sergeant uh, Kokonis, uh, we appreciate you coming in, and our hearts and prayers go out to you there in that city because it is certainly a crisis, and we are just in the middle of summer. Thank you very much for coming on today. We will follow this story. Thank you. All right, and Mayor Emanuel, you have an opportunity to come on this show anytime in an open invitation. Now, outrage over the Las Vegas massacre. Police now closing the case. There's one survivor who says she needs more answers. Hear from her next. And President Trump taking his message straight to the people this week. America is winning again. Last week we announced that the U.S. economy grew at 4.1 percent last quarter. Nobody thought that was possible. So what did the voters think? We've got the brand new dials. That's coming up next. It's Saturday. Let's get going. A jump off. Nobody gonna know. Can't you see? I was worried he wouldn't be a good Republican, and honestly, he's changed my mind a lot. You know, the best thing he's done, in my opinion, is the tax cuts and the Supreme Court pick. So, and if he keeps doing a good job, I will. So, I didn't vote for anybody in 2000, uh, this very last election, uh, but this time around, I probably will vote for him. President Trump's message hitting home for Florida residents. I caught up to one rally goer before President Trump took the stage in Tampa and then after, and now he's on Team Trump. I agree with him. We need to make America strong again. We need to make America great again. And I like most of what I heard. So, you know, coming from a guy that didn't like him to liking him now, I think that's a step up, right? Cutting through the media straight to the people. And uh, that's uh, that's why he does those rallies and does them very effectively. Yeah, genuine response, though. It's always good to just get the response right after. Yeah. It's so real. And that guy, Mohammed uh, Shaker, a uh, member of the 82nd Airborne. 
<laughs> Fun Iraq in 2002. Well, the president had more than one rally this week. So what do the voters think of his stop in Pennsylvania? Here with the brand new dials is president and partner at Miss Glansky and Partners, Lee Carter, always with the latest dials. And what a week it's already been. Another rally sure tonight. Has. Lee, let's start with this one. He talked a lot about the workers and the importance of their job and the role they play in this country. Here's what he said. The backbone of our country, the backbone of American strength and might, but the loyalty of our workers was repaid with betrayal. You were betrayed by our politicians. You were betrayed by the people that ran our country, but you're not betrayed anymore. So this is Trump's message. This is Trump's appeal. Republicans gave this an A, independents a B, Democrats only a D. But I think it's just fascinating, this outsider approach, this I'm not the typical politician, you've been betrayed, I'm not the one that's going to do that. That's a message that, rena that, that resonates with the people. And we saw even in Tennessee with that big upset, um, incumbents and establishment candidates aren't having the same appeal. People want something different because they've been so disappointed over and over again. And when the president uses messaging like this, it resonates. It's interesting. The D grade from Democrats, it highlights, I think, the biggest problem they face in their party right now. They are not speaking directly to what Trump calls the backbone of this country. People with those jobs that allow us all to to really survive in this country. I think, do you're, do best. I think you're right. And I think that's why you're seeing some of these socialist candidates have a rise on the Democrat side because they are having a message towards uh, these same people. And I think the Democrats yeah. need to learn from that. They so, have to be talking to these people, embracing them and giving them hope because that's what they need. So Lee, I was at the Tampa rally on Tuesday and uh, you know, in all of these rallies, the president has one target that he really likes to hit. And that is of course, <laughs> the media legalism. We're doing better in all of these states than we did on election night. Despite only negative publicity, only negative stories from the fakers back there. <laughs> You know, the, the, his base loves his attacks on the media. Um, and we were just talking about this a little bit. They gave it an A. And the part of the reason is it's not just because they're so tired of, of the media attacking Trump. They're so tired of the media attacking the right. So on the right, mm -hmm. people gave this an A. You can see independents even gave it a B. Um, and meanwhile, Democrats, of course, turned out to this message. And, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are really afraid that the, the president is attacking the free press. Those that support this message are saying that's not... That's not what I, I agree with. I, I, I am supporting the fact that he's calling out fake news. Correct. It's not about free press. Say whatever you want. It's clarifying and calling out a, a bias that's existed for a long time. For independents to give it a B, I think, shows that it's percolating. Mm -hmm. and it's, it's a really interesting time because there's so much controversy, especially this week, about him calling out the media. All right, well, a lot for the president to be touting. Uh, and the top of that list is the economy. We saw another uh, set of great numbers this past week. Here he was talking about the economy. America is winning again. Last week we announced that the U.S. economy grew at 4.1% last quarter. Nobody thought that was possible. And if the Democrats got in, that number would be 1.2. It could even turn negative. It was going to go down. Mm. So that was really interesting, right? You can see there the Republicans gave us an A. Independence would be Democrats only a C minus. Now, this is what I want to point out. The Democrats. <laughs> That's so kind of them. But here's the thing. In the beginning, the Democrats were really responding. He was talking about how great the economy was. It was only when he started attacking the Democrats that they turned off. Not that surprising there. But the idea that they are responding on the economy is really a big deal for the president. And this is a big deal for the Republicans going into the midterms. Yeah. People are feeling optimistic. They feel good about the money in their pocketbooks. Yes, people are concerned about tariffs, but not that concerned. People are still feeling good. Most people, more than two thirds of people, still think that the tariffs are a really good negotiating strategy and they think in the long term it's going to benefit yeah. the U.S. So. Very interesting. C minus. So, you know, it was James Carville, a Democrat uh, White House, that said it's the economy is stupid. We'll see if that C minus can go up to a C. What? C minus is a passing grade. The economy continues to get better. That's, That's right. asking too much, Griff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lee We always love these dials, though. Thank you so Thank much. Great. Good to see Appreciate you later. It. All right, a lot going on this morning. I do want to bring you some other headlines that we are following. Starting with this, the investigation into the deadly Las Vegas concert massacre is officially closed. But police, they still don't know the gunman's motive. It was a war zone, most horrific, tragic event of my life, and 22,000 people 
were, were had bullets raining down upon us, and now we have no idea why. The final police report, it does reveal that the shooter was mentally ill and lost more than $1 million before last year's attack that left, that left 58 people dead. No one else will be charged. And two passengers being hailed heroes for restraining a man threatening to take the plane down. Witnesses say that the suspect was punching windows and screaming on the Delta flight from Maine when a Coast Guardsman and former corrections officer on board stepped in was capable of doing or what he wanted to do, but we, I, I wasn't willing to sit around and find out. Somebody had to do something. Wow, the unidentified suspect was arrested when the plane ultimately, ultimately landed in Atlanta. And people sent running and ducking for cover after a lit firework flies onto a bar patio. Take a look at this surveillance video showing the blast in Asheville, North Carolina. Police are now looking for a suspect who they believe tossed the firework from a passing car. One person was hurt, but luckily will be okay. Yikes. Boy. And listen to this. A little girl gets a very important visitor on her first day of third grade. Watch this. Hi. That is the Air Force Master Sergeant Esmeralda McKenzie hugging her shocked daughter in the Arizona classroom. She just came home after serving six months in Iraq. What a very, sweet story. Very cool. But my takeaway is, wait, school's already starting? It's only August 4th. Yeah, I've heard that. Certain really? places around the country have already started But school. you're from Arizona. Is this a thing? No, it's not. Well, I mean, I was in school like 30 years ago. Let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a beautiful story, but I couldn't, I couldn't stop thinking about it. It's only August 4th. I, we have a bunch of back-to-school segments on the show today. Yeah, oh. I know Which was Florida really disturbing school. to me when I saw that was happening. It yeah. doesn't make any sense at all. No. Poor kids. Like, is there even a summer no, anymore that summer. they can enjoy? Rick, I think they get out a little earlier in the spring. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, I think they get out like maybe in, in April. <laughs> I, I'm just making that up, actually. I, I, I hope. You'll totally totally not true. Four years <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, all right, guys, uh, take a look at these maps here. I want to point this out right there. 98 degrees in Phoenix. And what is it? It's uh, 340 in the morning there. So obviously it's really hot. 76 here in New York, right here along the eastern seaboard. It's hot. It's humid. We had all that flooding uh, yesterday that we were worried about in Lynchburg, Virginia, from very heavy rains. Take a look at the radar map. Move this map forward. My clicker is not working, by the way, so our audio person in the back, Marilyn, is, is forwarding this for me. So that was Marilyn's move. Uh, move this one more forward. We're going to dry out a little bit here across parts of the southeast today, which is good. They've been socked into a lot of rain. We at least have a couple of dry days here. We see the rain come back in, say, by about Tuesday to Wednesday. Move this forward here, Marilyn. Hit one more button. We have big storms moving across the northeast. So this is also bringing some flooding. We have some flash flood warnings going on across parts of New Jersey. So get ready. This is a really big storm. And then move this forward one more time for me, Marilyn. That's Marilyn. She's amazing. And this is our line of storms here that's moving across the plains. Get ready. Some big storms across Minnesota this morning. You see this line right here. That is the front that's going to continue to pull towards the east. No rain out across parts of California, unfortunately, uh, where all that dry condition is going It's on. good, by the way. It looks like uh, down there in southern Virginia, it's not going to be uh, as many storms. That's what I, mean, I started saying, but you guys weren't listening. Hmm. But yes, they're <laughs> drying out there. <laughs> I covered that story. Get that technology fixed. <laughs> Thank you, though, for Thank putting you, that out again. It's good to reinforce that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, next, an update on the remains of the veteran, uh, the veterans of the Korean War that are returned home. So what's next? The head of the DNA operations for the DOD, for the Department of Defense, joins us next with more on the identification process. And President Trump firing back at LeBron James this morning, days after he criticized the president. What I noticed over the last few months um, that he's kind of used sport to kind of divide us. And, I, and that's something that I can't relate to because I know that sport. Good Saturday morning. Some quick animal headlines you see here. The tourist caught on camera taunting a bison. He's under arrest. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh God. Oh God, no, no, I can't watch it. No, 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 no. Oh, no. oh, oh no. police say that's oh, Raymond no. Reinkes beating his chest at the animal in Yellowstone National Park. He's had several run-ins with the law oh, no, no, in national no, parks over the last few weeks. In this, a rhino charges at an SUV at a drive-through animal park. Take a look. 
Yikes, the rhino nearly flipping the SUV in Mexico. It's unclear whether or not it was provoked. The family inside the car was fortunately not hurt. Pete? Wow, that's really intense. All right, Griff, thanks. Well, scientists with the Department of Defense say the remains returned by North Korea this week are, quote, consistent with being Americans. But scientists say that it could take years to identify them all. Here with an inside look at the identification process is Dr. Timothy McMahon. He's the DNA operations officer for the Department of Defense. Tim, thank you very much for being here this morning. It's my pleasure. So obviously, I, I was there. We're all very heartened by the return of these remains. We're hopeful that it's as many Americans as possible. Uh, what are your expectations about what we might learn in the coming weeks and months? So the expectations of, that we will see is that the uh, DPAA, the anthropologists, odontologists, they will start their measurements and, and then soon start to promote samples for DNA testing. Uh, the Defense Health Agency's Armed Forces Medical Examiner Systems DNA Lab uh, has been a partner with DPAA since 1991 to do all of the DNA testing for these past accounting mm. samples. So we will receive portions of bone that we will extract. We will then put through mitochondrial DNA sequencing, autosomal short tandem repeats, or what we call Y chromosomal short tandem repeats. So sophisticated repeat. stuff to yep. figure out uh, who, who these heroes are. And then part of your job is to maintain a database of family members. So how, how many of the missing Korean War veterans are in your database, family members? So right now we have 92% coverage of having some form of a maternal, paternal, or autosomal family reference wow. for the 8,100 initial missing from the Korea. Uh, Korean War. So the hope is that when, once the identif once the DNA work is done, which which could take a lot of time, you you've got an immediate match with a family member. Well, we we will get a, a depending on the test, we will get a match to if it's a lineage marker we call it, like mitochondrial DNA, it will match um, a family member or it could match two or three different because of a common type. But then we can go to a more definitive test like whole genome sequencing of the mitochondrial DNA and actually segregate that in, into an individual person. Or we can rely on a paternal reference, so anyone on the, the father's side of the missing service member, and do that and, and be able to segregate them into individual identification. And if folks want to, you know, their, their families of a, of a Korean War veteran, where can they go? So they can go to the reverse, their respective service casualty offices for the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marine. And it's for anyone who thinks they're a viable family um, reference. We get a lot of our leads for missing ones from the families themselves. Really? Yeah. Good stuff. Doctor, thanks a lot. Thanks right. for what you do. Thank We're you. All, it was a proud day bringing those guys home. Day. All right. Well, coming up, targeting ICE in a production of the Diary of Anne Frank. While they're swapping out the Nazis for ICE agents. Yeah, we're serious. And there are tools Amazon doesn't want you to know about. Kurt, the cyber guy, is here with what you do need to know for some online shopping. Good Saturday morning, some quick animal headlines you see here. The tourist caught on camera taunting a bison. He's under arrest. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. No, no. I can't watch it. No, 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 no. Oh, no. Police say that's Raymond Reinke's beating his chest at the animal in Yellowstone National Park. He's had several run-ins with the law in national parks over the last few weeks. In this, a rhino charges at an SUV at a drive through animal park. Take a look. Yikes, the rhino nearly flipping the SUV in Mexico. It's unclear whether or not it was provoked. The family inside the car was fortunately not hurt. Pete? Wow, that's really intense. All right, Griff, thanks. Well, scientists with the Department of Defense say the remains returned by North Korea this week are, quote, consistent with being Americans. But scientists say that it could take years to identify them all. Here with an inside look at the identification process is Dr. Timothy McMahon. He's the DNA operations officer for the Department of Defense. Tim, thank you very much for being here this morning. It's my pleasure. So obviously, I, I was there. We're all very heartened by the return of these remains. We're hopeful that it's as many Americans as possible. Uh, what are your expectations about what we might learn in the coming weeks and months? So the expectations of, that we will see is that 
that the uh, DPAA, the anthropologists, odontologists, they will start their measurements and, and then soon start to promote samples for DNA testing. Uh, the Defense Health Agency's Armed Force Medical Examiner Systems DNA Lab uh, has been a partner with DPAA since 1991 to do all of the DNA testing for these past accounting mm. samples. So we will receive portions of bone that we will extract. We will then put through 